So I have a bad feeling about this egg. Um, it's the last one to hatch. It was rocking a little bit this morning when I checked it, but not much uh, before it was wiggling like crazy. I'm gonna put some air holes in this to start with and see if that, uh, see if I can if I can hear anything or if you know I see any movement. Um, the air cell for emu eggs is on the top, and when you get close to to um, I guess I wouldn't call it lockdown for emu eggs, but the last couple days before hatching, you stop rotating, and I sort of. Like the, the air cell will usually orient itself on top, like just, it'll naturally orient itself on top and the baby will be heavier on the bottom. So uh, for the most part, when it stops rolling, that's the top. Um, but you can also kind of, you can also sort of hear it a little bit. So I'm gonna try and uh, drill some holes. Um, I'm going to put two air holes in, one, um, let's see, you know, I'm, I'm, I just want to make sure that I don't, I'm going to do this slowly. If you can't see, I apologize, but I, uh, you know, I, I would rather be more careful than, uh, make sure I get a good shot. But, all right. So essentially, and these are thick, the, the tricky part, the tricky part is going through the egg, um, to get, you have to get a little pressure to go through the egg, but you can't put too much on or you could poke through. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if you can see that very well, but I mean, it's, it's a little bit coming through at a time. I mean, if baby were sleeping, this should, this should wake baby up. So... Now I've made it, I don't know if you can see this. Um, see that little white spot in the middle? That is the inner, or excuse me, the outer membrane. It's inside the egg, but it's the outer membrane. That doesn't contain any uh, veins. I'm just widening. I haven't broken through that inner, the inner, the out, excuse me, the outer membrane yet. I haven't broken through that. Okay, I'm really bad at, at, at videography, so excuse me for, okay, so the hole's bigger. Okay. That gave a little bit. Okay, I'm through. I'm looking for any bleeding, like heavy bleeding. I don't hear any movement at all. And I really should. Um, there's a little pink, but and there, here's some, I have some little feathers like right on the edge. Uh, huh. This is not, I'm not happy about this. I don't think baby made it. Okay, what I'm gonna do is just, I don't think there's any point in making a second hole and seeing if anything happens. You in there, baby? Anything? I think I'm just gonna start to peel this away, this egg uh, shell and see if I can, Okay, I went to get some sort of, um, just a tool. This is just a little, like, glasses, uh, flathead screwdriver. Okay. Yeah, no, oh, baby. Now I'm just going to start slowly chipping away a little bit. I don't know how you can see that, but, um, I'm going to go really slowly because... I don't want uh, I don't want to accidentally break any blood vessels. This would be a lot. 
I'm going a little bit faster than I am with the chicken egg just because the uh, outer membrane is a lot more thick than a chick's, than in a chicken egg. Um, and so you're much less likely to puncture anything, but and you still wanna be careful. You there, baby? Anything? All right, I'm pushing in. I've got my finger on the outer membrane and I'm, feel, I'm feeling around for movement. Yeah, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. And if it were alive, it would be moving. Oh, dang it, baby. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, so here, um, the air cell is right here and it looks like it never pip through, I don't think. It never made it through. Okay. Okay, the, so here's the outer, here's the inner membrane. And yep, see, this baby was due to hatch and it just didn't, it didn't make it. Can I see here? So you have to, I'll have to apologize ahead of time. The stand that I'm using um, is solid, so I can't see, see really what I'm aiming at. But like I said, uh, poor baby. If the chick were still, um, if it had, this is ready to, this chick is ready to hatch. So this chick right here was ready to hatch because the, uh, the inner membrane, I don't know if you can see it on here very well, um, but you can actually see sort of like the little, uh, the marks where the veins were, um, and they're, they're still there. The, the, I guess, network of veins is still there. They're just empty of blood. The blood was drawn in with the yolk sac. Uh, see, now there's some blood here um, that could be just a blood vessel that got cut off or it could mean that um, it wasn't, it was still absorbing, but um, the chick died before the process could be finished. Yeah, this, ch oh, this chick is pretty long. This chick is pretty big. There's really no room for the air sac in here. So... This chick grew a little bit too fast for, I don't know if the air sac was in the right spot either, but it, the temperature, I keep it 97.5 and I mean, I would be concerned that it was too much, too high because it grew too fast, um, except that all the others have hatched just fine. So um, I'm not worried about the temperature or any of the other settings. Um, in this case, it just, this was going to be a big chick. And it just wasn't able to position itself in time because it's, it's beak. Okay, let's see. Again, I apologize if I'm not getting this centered correctly. I really can't see um, my, the, the shot that I'm getting here. See, this is the, th and, and I wouldn't have, and there was no reason for me to think about intervening because it was well within the window of when it was supposed to hatch. I had one hatch, um, this morning, actually, or yesterday. Okay, so the chick, its head, oh, here's its head. Yeah, this chick was just too big for the egg to get itself positioned properly. Um, it's, it would need to have, there needs to be an air cell uh, where it can kind of poke its head out. And Okay, so its head, its head, oh no, that's its foot. Oh, there's its head, I'm just, yeah. Okay, so its, its head was right here. Um, and I think, I think, yeah, I just think the chick was way too big um, for the egg and it just didn't have enough room to um, to maneuver and get, I guess, enough, uh, what am I, I don't know, get lined up correctly to push through. Um, this, this big, so it would have, what would have happened is the chick would have been like this and the air sac should, or the air cell, it should have aligned itself so that the air cell was right above its face. And then it would break through that inner, this um, thin inner membrane first. Let's see my in the shot there. 
um, the thin, clear inner membrane. It would poke a hole in that. And ideally, it would poke a hole either in between as the veins are starting to empty or the vessels, would they be, or, I don't, I'm not sure, but as the vessels would be starting to empty. So uh, it wouldn't cause any bleeding, uh, any excess bleeding. So that when it does poke through the inner membrane, and, and sometimes um, it may just go all the way through uh, to the outer membrane. Just uh, sometimes there's a little bit of wiggle room in terms of, and most chicks usually go into the inner membrane first and they have a nice big fat air sac uh, air cell to breathe through while the yolk is getting finished, uh, is finishing getting absorbed into the abdomen. Because actually, see, so yeah, this, uh, okay, so this guy was all ready to come out. He just, um, yeah, he just couldn't get any air, uh, didn't, didn't pip, and so he couldn't get any air. You can see here, this is uh, the abdomen where the yolk is absorbed into the body. Uh, and that, this is actually where the yolk sac is uh, attached. I believe it's between, between the small and large intestine. I'm gonna have to double check on that, but it's definitely attached. It might be, maybe it's before the small intestine, somewhere around there, but it's, it's actually part of the digestive system. So it's, it's an outgrowth, if you will, of the digestive system. And so the yolk is sort of the, like a, a feed sack that goes, you know, instead of a, a mother uh, live birth, giving it the nutrients it needs through her blood, everything, all the food it needs is in that yolk sack. Um, and that's what uh, gives it fuel to grow, et cetera, et cetera. And then because chicks, they might not all hatch exactly the same time. And uh, mama, uh, for chickens and daddies in the case of emus, they will often sit until either all the eggs have hatched or several days after those chicks, the, the first chicks have hatched to see if anyone else is going to hatch. Um, and so those first chicks that hatch, they're, the yolk sac is what sustains them. So the yolk sac gets absorbed and it's as it's being used up by the chick, it empties and it sort of shrinks. And then when it's finally used all up, it shrinks into a little tiny, like a little button, almost like a little tumory flesh uh, button on their digestive tract. So in this case, um, yeah, everything worked uh, according to plan except for... Um, it didn't, it wasn't able to break out and it wasn't able to get air. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not sure. It, no, I don't think the, the egg wasn't any smaller than the others. So in this case, a chick just, it, it was just a big boy or girl. So I hope, uh, I feel, I, I feel horrible for the chick. You never like to see this, but, um, you know, in this case, hopefully you were able to learn something and, and see, um, see what it looks like sometimes when the when the hatching doesn't uh pan out well so